Thanks everybody for coming tonight. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Councilman Mike Bonin. I want to welcome you here to this meeting tonight to talk about what is one of the most significant and pressing and challenging issues in the community of Venice, in the city of Los Angeles, in the region, and really in the state of California. Uh, we have right now, in this community and in this city, an incredible crisis of homelessness. One that has gotten dramatically worse over the past couple years. One that is likely to get a little bit worse before it gets better. One that is getting worse around the city of Los Angeles. It is a challenge to who we are. It's an insult to our conscience. And it is, as anybody who lives in Venice knows, a crisis in each of our neighborhoods. We have in Los Angeles more homeless people than we ever have, and in more places than we've ever had them. There was a time in Los Angeles' history when homelessness was largely confined to Skid Row, with big pockets in Hollywood and in Venice. Over the past several years, the homeless population in Los Angeles has risen dramatically. It has increased over the past two years by 12%, and it has increased visibly in almost every neighborhood in Los Angeles, not just in Venice, although it's a severe crisis in Venice, but in Van Nuys, in East Los Angeles, in South Los Angeles, in San Pedro, in Arlita, every single neighborhood in Los Angeles. You can see people sleeping under our bridges, in front of some of our schools, in front of some of our businesses. And it, it is a crisis about who we are. As I said, the problem in Los Angeles is probably going to get worse before it gets better. But it is, I think, going to get better. What we've done over the past decade in Los Angeles has been a lot, but it clearly hasn't been enough, and it clearly hasn't been working. Over the past 10 years, Los Angeles has actually housed more people than it ever has before, but the problem has gotten significantly worse. Some of the things we've done have been wrong and have backfired, and some of the things we've done we just haven't done aggressively enough or funded enough or done it sufficiently enough. We are not going to end homelessness in Venice unless we end homelessness in Los Angeles. So tonight I'm going to talk about the strategies that we're going to deploy around the county and around the city, and then I'm going to talk specifically about what we're going to be doing here in Venice. What we faced over the past couple years is I think the community throughout Los Angeles, and particularly in Venice, has come to a boiling point over homelessness. There are some people who have seen the problem on our streets and have demanded that the city act and the county act with compassion. And then there's other people who have acted with anger and with frustration, and there's many people who have acted with a combination of all of those emotions. And they have demanded action. It has been very hard for a very long time to do things in many of our communities because dealing with homelessness is so controversial and so divisive and that there are no easy answers. But the one thing that is worse than controversy, the one thing that is worse than divisiveness is inaction. And so what I wanted to do tonight was come here tonight and talk about several proposals, several ideas to begin to take action here in Venice. I am sure that there is something I will say tonight that everyone will find pleasing, and I'm equally confident there's something I will say tonight that everybody will find aggravating or frustrating or angering. But I'm not, I can't wait any longer for consensus before we take action, because we need to eliminate the problem of homelessness in Los Angeles and here in Venice. Our format tonight is going to be, uh, I'm going to give a PowerPoint presentation, and I'm going to do it in two parts. The first part is going to explain what the city and the county strategy is and give a little bit of an overview. And then the second part, I will detail a number of proposals and plans for here in the Venice community. Alone, these proposals will not end homelessness in Venice. It will be a start. It will be the start of what I hope will be significant progress that will take a very long time to accomplish. 
There's a number of folks here who will help me answer questions if you have it. After I do both ends of the presentation, I will take questions. I will uh, listen to comments. Uh, and then I will have a number of the folks who are here tonight help me answer some of those questions. Tonight is the beginning of a conversation. Uh, I understand I'm going to be putting out a lot of information tonight. There's probably about 14, 15 different things I'm talking about tonight. Some of them will be well received and some of them won't be. And I am committed to doing a lot of community outreach and a lot of listening in our neighborhoods about all of these ideas. So if there's anything tonight that seems big or controversial, tonight is not the only meeting. Tonight is the first. I'll be happy to go to special town hall meetings. I'll be happy to do neighborhood meetings. I'll be happy to do a special session with the Venice Neighborhood Council to talk about individual proposals that we'll be talking about tonight. So let me just acknowledge a few of the folks who are here tonight who will help me answer some of the questions uh, if we have them. Um, Colleen Murphy from the St. Joseph Center is here tonight. Colleen, where are you? Thank you. Uh, Sandra Estrada from the Keen Project. Sandra here? Oh, yeah. uh, she's in the back. Uh, Molly Reisman from uh, Supervisor Sheila Kuehl's office from Los Angeles County. Thank you, Molly. Uh, Dara Papel from Chrysalis. Is Dara here from Chrysalis? I guess she's on her way. Uh, Camille Spaulding uh, from Google. Uh, Regina Weller from Foursquare Church. Thank you, Regina. Uh, Allison Hurst from SPY, Safe Place for Youth. Uh, Mark Salzberg from the Venice Neighborhood Council. Carl Lambert from the Venice Chamber. Um, Marie Daniel from Department of Public Health, County of Los Angeles. Thank you, Marie. Uh, Jackie Wilcoxon from the County's Department of Mental Health. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, Elisa Orduna from the Mayor's Office. She's on Electric Avenue. Okay. That's Daniel Tam, also from the Mayor's Office. Uh, he's our area rep. Elisa is the Mayor's Point person on homelessness. Uh, Peter Lynn, the Executive Director of Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority. Uh, Mark Miller from Marina Del Rey Hospital. Thank you, Mark, for being here. Uh, Darcy Niva from the Westside Coalition. Darcy, thank you for being here. Um, we have uh, Jason Robinson from SHARE. Jason, thank you for being here. Uh, is Mike McKindo from LAFD with us yet? Thank you, Mike. Good to see you. Um, uh, Kathleen uh, Gagnon from Lava May. Thank you both for being here. Um, and uh, also with us are uh, Jeff Thomas or Jeff Thompson from the CLA's office, CAO's office. He is uh, the principal author of the city homelessness strategy report that was just published. Uh, and Stephen Liu from the CLA's office who also worked on it. Uh, we also have a number of folks here from LAPD, uh, Captain Alberca and Captain Tippett uh, among them. So um, again, what I'll do is I'll give the, the presentation summarizing both the city plan um, and then uh, we'll explain some of the strategies for Venice and then we'll do question and answer. So uh, David, why don't we start the PowerPoint. <coughs> so the first thing I wanted to do was give a little bit of an overview. I touched on this a little bit in my opening remarks. Uh, there are, according to the last homeless count uh, that has been published, which was conducted about 14 months ago, uh, 44,000 homeless people in Los Angeles County. Uh, that was done over uh, every two years, and over the two-year period since it had last been conducted, the homeless population in Los Angeles increased by 12%. And the number of encampments in Los Angeles, the number of people living uh, in tents on our streets, the number of people living in vehicles increased by some 85% citywide. A particularly frightening statistic about homelessness in Los Angeles, and this is very different from most other cities, is that 70% of our homeless population on any given night is unsheltered. In the city of New York, for instance, folks have a guaranteed right to shelter. So in New York City, anybody can get a shelter bed. Here in Los Angeles, we have a guaranteed right by courts to sleep on a sidewalk. So because we have not been providing opportunities for people, we have 70% of our population here unsheltered. We just did another homeless count in uh, late January, and those numbers should be out in about a month, in early May. And uh, I have no uh, actual evidence of this from LASA, but my guess, at least from what I've seen, is that those numbers have probably gone up over the past year. Uh, and we'll be seeing those results in, in just a, a little bit. 
There are over 100, or over 1,000 homeless people in Venice. Uh, the count uh, last time was a little over 1,000 people. Again, I, th I think that number may have gone up a little bit. Uh, the city and the county recently came up with very comprehensive homeless strategies. For a very long time, the city and the county have not worked together particularly effectively on homelessness. And it is absolutely essential that both agencies of government do it. There are things that the city and th that New York has done that we have not done. There are things that San Francisco has done that we have not done. And one of the big differences is that both of those jurisdictions are both cities and counties. And the county in Los Angeles is really the big kahuna when it comes to homelessness. The county gets health care money. The county gets mental health money. The county gets social service money that the city doesn't have. They get it from the feds and from the state. So the fact that the city and the county worked together over a period of six to, six to nine months to come up with plans that are both parallel and complementary and symbiotic is incredibly important. The county in its strategy has, I believe, 49 different strategies. The city has, I think, is it 62? 64. Uh, there are things that the city is on the hook for doing that the county is not, so we have a, a, a few more uh, things that they do. The, the thing that is impressive about both documents, go back just a second, David, is that uh, they look at the roots of homelessness as well as, as ways of dealing with homelessness on the streets right now. Uh, so one of the things that the county identified is that a lot of people are discharged into homelessness from institutions, from hospitals, from jails, and even from foster care. Uh, we all know that uh, the lack of income equality and affordable housing in Los Angeles is a big cause for it. So the fact that the city and the county both approve uh, dramatic increases, uh, groundbreaking increases that the state is now going to follow in the minimum wage is a big part of our strategy to prevent homelessness. The thing that I think is most impressive about both plans is that they have multiple approaches for multiple problems. There is no one type of homelessness, there is no one cause of homelessness, and there's no one solution to homelessness. So rather than putting all eggs in one basket, these strategies have various different approaches to deal with different types of homelessness and, and, and different solutions. So the principles of both the city and the county plan are pretty simple. One is to reduce homelessness to a functional zero here in Los Angeles. Now, a functional zero means not that you will never see another homeless person in Los Angeles, but that we will have the capacity to rapidly rehouse anyone who becomes homeless. The city of Los Angeles and the county of Los Angeles, in large part due to Mayor Garcetti's leadership, picked up the challenge from Michelle Obama a couple years ago and decided to eliminate veterans' homelessness. And the city has done more to end veterans' homelessness than most cities and most states. The goal had been to end veterans' homelessness by the end of last year. Unfortunately, two things happened. We found it very hard to find enough units for veterans who had housing vouchers, and more veterans became homelessness at a faster rate than we anticipated. So the goal now is to get to a functional zero on veterans' homelessness by the middle of this year. Uh, and then we hope to, to replicate that success with, with overall general homelessness in Los Angeles, to, to build in the infrastructure to get people housed rapidly. Both systems are data-based. Uh, they are centered around what is called CES, a coordinated entry system uh, that basically uh, surveys everyone who is homeless that is identified and quantifies uh, all of their conditions, their history, and then puts them into a centralized database so that any agency that is dealing with anybody knows that the other agencies are dealing with them and there can be a coordinated plan individualized for each person to help them get off the streets. Uh, central to both plans is the concept of housing first. Uh, the, not a week goes by that folks in government don't get usually the clip from the John Stewart show showing what they did in Salt Lake City, uh, which is they, they implemented a housing first philosophy. Housing first essentially means that instead of the old way of doing things, which is we forced you to get sober or seek treatment for mental illness before we would give you a place to stay, housing first is we give you a place to stay and then help you get sober and help you get treatment afterwards. And that's a cornerstone uh, of this plan. And it actually started really in Los Angeles. Central, of course, also is the fact that we simply 
absolutely need more affordable housing, and both plans call for significantly more affordable housing in Los Angeles. So in the city plan, which I'll talk about more, and Supervisor Kuhl's office is, is here if you want to hear more about the county plan, uh, we talk both about the long term and the short term. Uh, we talk about long-term strategies to increase housing in Los Angeles. We talk about medium-term uh, strategies to increase services. And then something that was very important to me in development of these plans is we also have a short-term sh uh, street strategy. Uh, under no scenario is homelessness going to end in Los Angeles or in Venice next year. And for too long, elected officials, politicians, government folks have had the press conference every couple years that says we're going to end homelessness by building permanent supportive housing. And then for whatever reason, the money doesn't come through, neighbors oppose projects, uh, or, or whatever, the housing doesn't get built. In the meantime, people are still living on our streets, in front of our homes, our businesses, suffering from illness, getting sicker, not getting the services they need. So it was very important to me that in this plan, we deal with the immediate as well, and not pretend that this problem doesn't exist while we're working on the bigger one. <clears throat> so as I said, um, central to the, the city plan is the coordinated entry system. And this was started actually, it was really built by Home for Good, which is a groundbreaking cooperation between the Los Angeles Area Chamber of Commerce uh, and the United Way. And as I said, it's a, it's a universal intake system where shared information between the different agencies that are trying to help people. There's actually uh, a, a pilot program right now for a coordinated entry system for uh, transition-aged youth, kids under the age of 25. Uh, and there's also a, a separate one for families. And we're merging all three of these systems so that we can get everything together. And that's going to be done under the leadership of Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority. So um, as I said, a big part of the city plan is housing. And as I said, we're not putting all of our eggs in one basket. So we're looking at doing uh, different types of housing. Uh, obviously, a key part of it is permanent supportive housing. That's housing for folks who have been chronically homeless, who need uh, a more extensive set of, of services in order to make the transition uh, and to be able to make a permanent transition from living on the street uh, to uh, uh, living in homes. Uh, rapid rehousing is a, is a term of art that refers basically to rental subsidies. It's for someone who has recently become homeless, it's a very effective strategy, uh, to give them rental subsidies for a couple months, maybe a smaller amount of services to help them get on their feet and get established, and, and, and then they're, they're, they're usually good to go from there. Instead of waiting for someone to become chronically homeless, to get much sicker, or develop a disability, we intervene early, and that's a key part of the city strategy. Uh, I mentioned transitional housing because it's, it's something that we used to do a lot of, and the federal government is cutting funding for transitional housing. Um, so we're, we're looking at other strategies, but I, I put it up there because there's an important element of, of transitional housing. Uh, we have had a lot of transitional housing for victims of domestic violence, and about 31% of those homeless in my council district, uh, part of the reason they're homeless is because of domestic violence. And because of federal cuts in how they do transitional housing, we're losing about 200 domestic violence shelter beds in the city of Los Angeles. And it's going to be very important for the city of Los Angeles in this year's budget to fill that gap. And that's something we're going to try to do in the budget deliberations that begin next month. A fourth element is shared housing, which is something which has been uh, pretty popular uh, with an agency called SHARE. Jason over here represents SHARE. It's basically getting folks who are living on the street, and if they have a, a source of income from SSI or general re relief, matching them uh, in, in a home that is looking for, for, for someone to, to share housing. So it may be a couple folks using roommates. And there has been uh, some great success here in Venice and in other communities in getting folks off the streets using that. Um, we're also looking at master lease programs. Uh, the county is doing a phenomenal job, a phenomenal job, with a program that basically goes out and leases a bunch of units and puts folks who are frequent users of their emergency medical clinics into housing. We don't have a county emergency medical clinic here, so folks in Venice have not been able to avail themselves of that opportunity. Ocean Park Community Center in Santa Monica is doing a similar program where they're going out and, and renting units and they become effectively 
the landlord, and then they move folks in more quickly than through a traditional voucher system. This is something in the city plan, at my urging, we're gonna put money forward in order to buy into the county program and buy into other programs like this so we can more rapidly move people off the street. And then the final type is crisis bridge or interim housing. One of the things we want to do is change the nature of emergency shelters in Los Angeles to stop making them big, huge warehouses that don't let people bring their belongings, don't let people bring their pets, don't let people uh, uh, stay with their uh, significant others, uh, and uh, throw people out at six in the morning. Uh, we are gonna be making a transition over the next few years into more of a bridge housing system that is more welcoming, that is more 24 hours, uh, and, that, and that prevents or presents fewer barriers to people saying yes to shelter. So many people often say, everybody is service resistant, they refuse to go to shelter. There are so many reasons why someone wouldn't go to shelter. It's caused us to look at what's wrong with our shelter system and how we can change it and transform it. <laughs> so in the city plan, it, it, it asks us to do a lot to change how we do land use in Los Angeles. And some of those are gonna be big and controversial decisions. Uh, we need to do things to preserve affordable housing, which I'll talk about in a second. We need to make it easier to build affordable housing, and that means changing some of our land use laws to make the process faster for affordable housing projects. We need to make public land available for development of affordable housing so that it's easier to make a finance out. Uh, there is a proposal that is in there that will be the subject of some discussion to uh, legalize accessory dwelling units, granny flats, uh, which can be used as affordable housing. There'd be a requirement, obviously, that they be used for affordable housing. Uh, and then there is a proposal to make it easier to provide affordable housing or homeless housing by eliminating some of the parking requirements, because generally, if you're building housing for the homeless, most of those folks don't have vehicles to begin with, and it adds huge costs to a project to be requiring a parking space for every resident. So those are a number of the things in the city plan. <coughs> The city also, and this gets to the, the sort of the street strategy I talked about and, and dealing with the fact that folks are living on the street, also calls for a number of different things. It calls for uh, reducing the amount of stuff left on sidewalks by providing free voluntary storage for people who are homeless. Uh, right now, the city only has two voluntary storage programs, a very tiny, tiny one that has about two dozen bins uh, on Venice Beach that started a couple years ago, and then a very big one in downtown Los Angeles on Skid Row, which obviously is inaccessible to folks in most parts of the city. So we are trying under this plan to build out storage facilities throughout the city so that it will be easier for folks to leave their belongings someplace safe so they can go to a medical appointment, they can go to a job interview, they can go to a housing interview, and that they can feel safe. We're also looking at replicating what was done in Santa Barbara which is a safe parking program, which is where the city allocates thank you, uh, certain parking lots for the safe parking of people who are living in their vehicle while they are being transitioned into housing. It's been a very successful program in Santa Barbara, and it's something I've been pushing for here uh, so that we don't have folks uh, uh, living on our residential streets, but we give them a place to stay with services, access to bathrooms, and a, a pipeline to housing. Uh, we're also talking about increasing access to showers, toilets, um, creating multi-service centers, and uh, something that the, the county really has been leading on is sobering centers. Really a place where you can take folks on the street who are uh, suffering from the effects of, of alcohol or drugs, and rather than tying up our LAPD or LAFD for hours at a hospital, bring them to what used to be called effectively uh, a, a drunk tank and get them cleaned up and in that moment when folks are recovering from the binge or the hangover, that's a, a sweet spot moment where, where, where folks are more likely to be accepting of services. So it's an alternative way uh, of trying to, to do service delivery. So how the hell are we gonna pay for this? Uh, the county's gonna have an easier time paying for their plan uh, because the county, as I said, gets all sorts of resources from the federal government and the state government. For the city, it's gonna be a lot tougher. We have a, a, a much tougher budget. Uh, we've allocated about 15 or $20 million over the past few months 
for increased shelter capacity, for rapid rehousing, for some of the storage programs. But we really need to get to be able to spend um, uh, you know, billions of dollars. Uh, how, how many over 10 years? 1.8 billion over 10 years minimum. Uh, and that's not going to come by uh, you know, stopping all tree trimming or, or closing all our libraries. We're going to need an additional revenue source for that. So we haven't decided what ask we will be making of the voters, but in November, we will be making an ask of the voters to come up with a dedicated revenue stream for affordable housing and for homelessness. And we'll have some details on that in the next few weeks. <laughs> okay, so that brings me to the Venice-specific strategies. As I said, we're not gonna end homelessness in Venice unless we end homelessness citywide. Uh, but we're not gonna end homelessness citywide if every community in Los Angeles doesn't do its part unless we try to, to do various different things. So um, just to give you some, some background on the homeless population here, uh, these are district st statistics, not specifically Venice, uh, but they give you a good accurate picture, is in this 11th district, which is all the west side except for Santa Monica, we had almost 2,400 homeless people a year ago. Uh, and even uh, here, the number of them who are unsheltered is even higher than the city average. It's 81%. Uh, they are 70% male, uh, and the bulk of them are in between 25 and 54 years old. Um, as you can see, uh, about a quarter of them identified as having substance abuse problems. 44% uh, were identified as suffering from some form of mental illness. Another quarter of them from a physical disability. Nearly a third of them had an experience with domestic violence that led them to the streets. About 20% of them were veterans, and nearly half of them were chronically homeless, which means they have a disability or they've been homeless for uh, a year and a half or so. Uh, this is just another way of looking at the statistics as well. Go on. Uh, in Venice, in the last count, they identified 947 homeless individuals and 56 family members and three unaccompanied minors. Uh, more specifically, in the count, and again this is a year ago, there are about 450 people on the streets, 75 in cars, 122 in vans, 98 in tents, 97 in campers, 109 encampments. I think that number has probably gone up over the past year. So in order to work on the city's homeless strategy, I sent a survey out to Venice to get a sense of what folks were thinking of, what folks identified as the biggest problems, and what folks uh, were interested in as potential solutions. Um, we got about 800 responses. It was sent out uh, to my entire uh, Venice email list. It was sent out through the Nextdoor network, and we asked uh, organizations and uh, neighborhood associations, the Venice Neighborhood Council, to circulate it. Uh, as it. As it indicates here, it's not a scientific survey, but it, it was somewhat indicative. Uh, there was significant support for safe parking, for building housing on city-owned land, for expanding voluntary storage, for reforming and expanding the shelter system, as I talked about, for mobile restrooms and showers, for dedicated police officers trained to address homeless issues, and the biggest thing that folks were opposed to was inaction, was doing nothing. So the first element, I'm, I'm going to break the, the Venice-specific strategies down into three categories. Housing, uh, outreach and services, and then the, the so-called street strategy. So uh, for housing, uh, the first part of it is how do we preserve affordable housing? Um, we have had a dramatic loss of affordable housing in the city of Los Angeles, and it's been particularly acute here in Venice. So there are two legislative strategies I want to talk about tonight. One is to reform what's called the Mellow Act. The Mellow Act is a state law which is meant to protect affordable housing in the coastal zone, which is Venice, west of Lincoln. Uh, that has, uh, the ordinance that has been in place for about 10 years has been a temporary and interim ordinance. And in my opinion, it has not been uh, enforced or monitored particularly effectively by the city of Los Angeles. We are, we have already put in the proposal to strengthen and tighten this ordinance to make it considerably harder to eliminate affordable housing in the coastal zone. Right now, the way the law is structured is that 
if it, if it proves financially infeasible for you to keep the affordable housing in a smaller project, you basically get to get rid of it. What we're going to be building in here is a, is a fee system so that if, if that determination is made, you still have to pay a fee that can be used to build affordable housing or buy affordable housing covenants and extend them in the coastal zone. And um, we will be, uh, that the, the bulk of that work will begin uh, this summer. The second effort we're taking to preserve affordable housing is legislation to deal with short-term rentals. Uh, I want to be clear, I'm not opposed to short-term rentals. Uh, there are many, I use short-term rentals when I go on vacation. Uh, there are many short-term rentals when someone rents out their primary residence or room in their home, I have no problem with. But here in Venice, and throughout Los Angeles, but particularly acute in Venice, we have seen speculators come in, rogue hotel operators come in, and buy entire buildings, uh, evict lots of people, and basically take a lot of rental housing and affordable housing off the market. And Council President Herb Wesson and I have a proposal to fix that, and that will be, uh, uh, the ordinance, draft ordinance should be out in April, and then we'll go through the, the, the city planning process. Uh, and I think that will be particularly helpful here in Venice. So then there's the question of building affordable housing. I announced this part, I didn't want to wait. Uh, I announced this part about a month ago. Uh, the Metro bus yard uh, on Main Street has closed down. I'm on the Metro Board of Directors along with Supervisor Kuhl, who is uh, my incredible partner on transportation and on affordable housing and on homelessness. And Sheila and I uh, have directed Metro to turn that into a joint development project. That means that they will uh, come to the community after they do the environmental mitigation. They will come to the community and they will develop a development proposal for that property. Metro's policy is that their portfolio of housing has to be minimum 35% affordable housing. We hope to get that for this property to be a lot higher. Uh, but we're going to be using this primarily to build more affordable housing in Venice. <coughs> um, let, 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 me, let me address the 100% part. There's some folks who would like this to be 100%. We have to find someone who is willing to build it for us. If there is a developer who comes forward and says, I am willing to build this for 100% 100, 100 affordable, that's great. That's something that we would love. Um, I don't know that we're going to find a lot of developers who are willing to do that, but if we do, that's wonderful. Uh, I'm just saying this is the, the floor by law and metro policy. Next. So we also need to build not just affordable housing, and that affordable housing, by the way, would be for folks who make probably $35,000 or less. It's based on, on average uh, uh, median income in Los Angeles. We also need to build more housing for folks who are homeless, not just workforce housing, not just uh, uh, affordable housing. We need to build housing for folks who are homeless. And as I said, uh, one of the key strategies the city is going to use for that is that we are going to use city property. And we are basically looking at every piece of city property in the city of Los Angeles. Parking lots, vacant facilities, and looking to see how we can use them to build affordable housing. So there is one piece of property which I have identified, which will be the first up for consideration, and that is the parking lot at Dell and Pacific. Um, Right now, uh, that is an underutilized space. It's a single level of open air parking. Uh, because parking is such a crisis in Venice, we will not uh, take away the parking. We will maintain, we will require that the 177 uh, spaces of parking remain. We might even be able to increase it somewhat. And then we will uh, look to uh, build housing for the homeless above that. And our goal is to keep it in compliance with the Venice Pacific Plan, so that would remain at 35 feet. Um, the process will be community driven. Uh, it will start with a motion that I'll initiate at council and then we will have to come out and we will have to talk to the community about exactly uh, how it should look and sort of what type of, of, of mix of homeless housing we should have in it. Now because folks tend to hear homeless housing and think of worst case scenarios, I want to show a couple photos of homeless housing in this area. Uh, this is the current lot right now, lot 701. This is a 23-unit building that was just opened by PATH, people assisting the homeless, 
in a uh, residential neighborhood in Delray, uh, not far from uh, Culver Boulevard. Uh, it is a spectacular facility, 23 people who used to be homeless, many of them from Venice. Uh, I met a gentleman there at the opening named Edward, who was one of those cases who was on the streets of Venice, lived, grew up on the west side, was homeless in Venice for about seven years, and was one of those cases that had said no and was service resistant. And he is now in, uh, in, the, in that housing as one of the residents um, has a job and is getting supportive services. Another facility, something you have probably driven past a million times and never knew that it was homeless housing, is at the corner of uh, Washington and Beethoven. It used to be a motel. It is now run by Upward Bound House. Uh, it's technically in Culver City, although it's surrounded by Los Angeles on all sides. Uh, and that is housing for homeless families right now. Uh, and it's a wonderful facility. Uh, and then finally, uh, this is uh, at Culver and Inglewood, uh, not far from LAPD's Pacific headquarters. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I can't remember how many units are in this building. It was opened by Tom Safran. It's a combination of affordable housing and homeless housing. Uh, I believe there are 13 units in this building for formerly homeless people, uh, a number of them from Venice, uh, one of them uh, former clients of, of uh, St. Joseph Center. So then there's the question of um, how do we provide more homeless housing, even that which we are not building. And I mentioned earlier the rapid rehousing program, those rental subsidies. And um, LASA uh, d uh, runs a rapid rehousing program. And um, we have found it to be, as I said, pretty effective intervention for a lot of the folks who are newly homeless. And it's something that the city and the county are both investing in significantly. The city just allocated $11 million to uh, expand uh, rapid rehousing vouchers. The county has invested significantly in rapid rehousing and is doing more. And uh, St. Joseph Center is the lead agency uh, on the west side in the service provider area. Uh, and they have just recently housed about 20 people, I understand, through rapid rehousing vouchers. <clears throat> so let me talk a little bit about services and outreach. So uh, one of the key elements of the strategy for the city and the county is this coordinated entry system, is using data, is getting everybody working on the same page, is sharing information. I wanted to make sure that we were doing a version of coordinated entry specific to Venice. So about a year ago, I launched something I called Venice Forward. And it is a coordinated entry system for Venice. I have brought together all the service agencies in Venice, a number of the big employers in Venice, all of the government agencies, and some individuals. Uh, we've got a working group, and I, I now want to sort of expand it out and broaden the universe now that we've got it functioning. But it has three goals. One is to get all the agencies working together so that if you are homeless and you're spending part of your day uh, at St. Joseph Center and part of your day at SPY and uh, part of your day uh, at Venice Community Housing Corporation, all of the agencies are talking together to make sure somebody uh, is, is the lead and that there's a strategy tailor-made for you. Uh, it's also to bring in community partners to help um, uh, various projects uh, and it's to create a platform for sharing these success stories. It's so easy to believe that there are no success stories because we continue to see encampments in Los Angeles. And there's success stories every day. And we wanted to find a vehicle to publish those stories, share those stories, so folks would know that there are positive things happening with homelessness and there's a way to engage and help. So the agencies involved in this are the city of Los Angeles, the county of Los Angeles, Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, uh, LAPD, Supervisor Kuehl and me, Marina Del Rey Hospital as a partner, the Venice Neighborhood Council, the Department of Mental Health from the county, the Mayor's Office, the Fire Department, and the Veterans Administration. St. Joseph Center, Venice Community Housing Corporation, Safe Place for Youth, uh, which works with young people, uh, SHARE, which I talked about, Venice Foursquare Church, the Venice Family Clinic, Ocean Park Community Center in Santa Monica, the Teen Project, which uh, has the drop-in center in Venice and also has Freehab in the Valley, which is one of the only uh, uh, free uh, rehab programs for young people, uh, PATH, New Directions for Veterans, the 1736 Family Crisis Center, 
and First to Serve, which runs the Emergency Winter Shelter Program. Also participating is Google, Snapchat, the Venice Chamber of Commerce, Upward Bound House, which I just showed you their facility a second ago in Washington and Beethoven, uh, Chrysalis, United Way, the West Side Shelter and Hunger Coalition, and Whole Foods Market. <clears throat> so there's also other things that we're doing for enhanced outreach. Um, one of the, the big things that has been a challenge in Los Angeles is uh, until just a few months ago, Peter, how many outreach workers did we have countywide? Uh, 13. Thir we had 13 outreach workers for the Homeless Services Authority countywide. We are, how many do we have now? We're, we're pushing up to 60. Uh, and we have a number of them who are assigned specifically to Venice. They do outreach and engagement to people living on the street. Uh, there are essentially is one full-time and one part-time Venice team. So there are uh, two to four outreach workers assigned to Venice. Uh, and in order to, to stop them from spending half of their day driving in traffic from downtown Los Angeles, they are now based at the St. Joseph Center here in Venice uh, doing outreach. <coughs> Thank you. Um, also, we have an incredible outreach team here done by uh, Pastor Weller and his wife, Regina. Uh, they have been doing incredible work with LAPD over the past couple years. Uh, they um, get folks housed and off the streets rapidly. They've done uh, phenomenal work getting folks into share housing. Uh, and they have also done a lot of work with uh, family reunification, getting folks uh, back quickly with, with, with family members. Uh, Regina does an amazing job, and I'm going to be supporting them with a $50,000 grant because they've been doing most of their work for free. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, Regina. Uh, another form of enhanced and expanded services we're doing is uh, this is the county that is doing this. I want to give the, the, the county credit for this. Um, as you saw, uh, about 44% of those on the west side who are homeless are suffering from some, some form of mental illness. Uh, last year, the Exodus West Side Urgent Care Center, which does mental health treatment, closed down. I'm proud to report uh, we got it reopened a couple months ago. Uh, the county is funding it and it provides uh, intensive care, crisis intervention, and linkage to social services for people who are, are suffering uh, from, from mental health problems, and it's, it's very key for LAPD and LAFD to have this resource close by. Uh, there is also a program which Supervisor Kuehl's office has been very supportive of. I'm not detailing every program that Sheila or the county does, but some key ones here is uh, what, what is called the V-CHIP program, which also treats uh, people who uh, are dealing with, with mental illness, uh, and that has been extremely effective. Uh, St. Joe's uh, is a key player in that. Uh, and there's a number of folks who have been housed and brought into permanent supportive housing and jobs who have met and whose success was recently celebrated by uh, the Shelter and Hunger Coalition as a result of, of this great mental health program. <clears throat> Another one is um, a need for the city of Los Angeles uh, to better train its first responders. One of the things that has been a problem historically in Los Angeles is that we have not had an agency for people to call if you see someone who is homeless or who is in distress. So we've created a culture where the response is call LAPD. Uh, LAPD, they may seem like trained social workers, but most of the time they're not. Uh, that becomes a part of their job description, but it's really not. And so one of the things we're doing is increasing the training for LAPD uh, in how to deal with mental health issues. And we increased that significantly in this year's budget. I think. Uh, 30 officers from Pacific have gone through the, uh, almost, double uh, almost double that now, have gone through the training. Uh, we are also expanding what are known as SMART teams, which is the system-wide mental assessment response uh, uh, unit, which is where uh, teams of folks from the Department of Mental Health go out with uh, trained officers as a team to respond to situations. Right now, uh, we have uh, one SMART team which is assigned to West Bureau, which is bigger than uh, Pacific. It's the west side plus uh, Hollywood and Wilshire area. Over the next few months, we should be getting a dedicated team uh, for Pacific Division specifically that can be doing a lot of work uh, here in Venice. Uh, and then uh, a program I wanted to mention that SPY is doing is one of the things that is very important for the population of young people who are homeless is giving them jobs. And SPY has put together a great education and youth employment program to help them get jobs. As I said, there's no one solution to homelessness and the different 
subpopulations of folks who are homeless all have different needs. And one thing that is particularly effective to a lot of the folks who may have recently come to Los Angeles uh, to try to break into the entertainment industry or who are fleeing uh, from abuse or, 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 or sexual problems at home is, is giving them a job and helping them get on their feet here at Los in, in Los Angeles. <clears throat> so finally, let me talk a little bit about the, the street strategy. Uh, so, uh, as I said, there are only uh, two places in all of Los Angeles where there are storage facilities and there need to be uh, at least 15 of them. There needs to be at least one in every single council district. Uh, there needs to be more in certain parts of town. Um, the only one we have right now uh, outside of Skid Row is in a storage trailer with no electricity, no light, uh, down at the beach that holds just a, a, a couple dozen uh, bins. And so uh, there has been a lot of discussion over the past couple of years about where to site a storage facility in Venice. No one has come up with a proposal that is universally acceptable. Um, and, but what we know is that a single trailer on Venice Beach doesn't work. So uh, I am uh, proposing, Lhasa has looked at it and is recommending that we do this, uh, that we look at the uh, Westminster Senior Facility. The Senior Center has been closed down for a number of years. Uh, there are a number of folks who are interested in using the facility for uh, different purposes. The Historical Society was interested in it. Uh, it sits adjacent to the very popular uh, Venice Dog Park. Uh, and it is a problematic location because it's close to residences. Uh, but we cannot continue to allow all of these encampments on the streets of Los Angeles. And so we are coming up with a system to give people an opportunity to put things someplace safe so that then we can do more cleaning and keep our sidewalks free and passable. We basically have two choices. We can either have things continue to be on the street or we can find a place to put them. Um, this is not gonna be a popular choice, I understand that. I am certainly open to an alternative if somebody can come up with a better suggestion. If there is a private property owner who wants to uh, provide a large space to do a storage program, happy to do that. That's how it started in downtown Los Angeles, is a warehouse owner actually uh, donated a, a large piece of property for a number of years. Um, uh, the organization that uh, will be operating the program is Chrysalis. Chrysalis has been operating the program downtown for a uh, very long time, for a couple years. They do a phenomenal job. Uh, and uh, one of the benefits of having Chrysalis operated is, if you're not familiar with Chrysalis, is they provide jobs to folks who are formerly homeless. Um, one of the, the, the key elements of having Chrysalis run it as well is that part of the intake for the storage will be the coordinated entry system. So this isn't just going to be a place for folks to show up. It'll be a place where if you're dropping your stuff off there, you automatically get entered into the coordinated entry system we have so it puts you on an easier path to getting services. And before this happens, there will be some community meetings. There will be discussion about uh, mitigations to make it more acceptable to the neighborhood. <clears throat> and that will be uh, managed by uh, LASA. They're going to be managing the storage programs uh, throughout the city, but they have a contract already with Chrysalis for the downtown one. Uh, so, this is a, su a suggestion that has been asked of me many, many times. Uh, folks have said, why can't we have mobile showers or bathrooms for uh, people who are homeless? And the number of people who sent me a link about Lava May, a successful program in San Francisco, probably numbers over 100. And what I have said to folks repeatedly is I will do exactly what the government in San Francisco did. Uh, in San Francisco, what happened was a bunch of neighbors uh, were upset by the problem. They formed a nonprofit called Lava May. The government gave them uh, free surplus buses and gave them permits to hook up to the water system. I can get the buses, I can get the hookups to the water system. Uh, and I was hoping that, that we'd get a sort of a homegrown nonprofit that would be willing to do it. Fortunately, Lava May uh, from San Francisco is willing to operate down here and if I can get them the funding uh, or a trailer which, will, which would take significantly less time to retrofit than a bus, 
then they will be able to do a mobile shower system down here uh, in Venice. And I'm happy to say that they're eager to do it, and we're going to make that happen. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, so, uh, restrooms. Last week, I, uh, I left Gold Gym at about 10.15 at night. And I parked at the lot next to Dogtown Loss. And as I was pulling out, my headlights flashed on the trash can right next to the parking lot entrance. It also flashed on the body of someone who was squatting down and defecating. The number of times that happens in Venice is unbelievable. Uh, and it's not just people who are homeless. I lived at 18th and Pacific for 17 years. And the number of evenings or afternoons I could look out my bedroom window and see some guy pissing on the wall of my building, I couldn't count. It's because we simply don't have sufficient restroom facilities in Venice. This idea is not fully worked out, but one of the things that is in the city's homelessness plan is to come up with more access to 24-hour restrooms uh, throughout the city. Uh, what I'm looking to do while I look for a more permanent solution is I'm going to be looking in this year's budget, which again is April and May, uh, to see if we can have funding to keep some of the existing bathrooms at Venice Beach open uh, later or 24-7. I, I should note that in the survey I sent around, this idea was not all that popular. Uh, an idea that was much more popular in the surveys was having porta potties uh, at different locations in Venice. Uh, I think that was probably more popular because it didn't have a specific location. Uh, but if, uh, if, the, if the neighborhood council wants to recommend different locations, uh, and it's something th that uh, uh, LAPD thinks would not create a public safety thing, then uh, we will also look at, at, at that as well. <coughs> but we need to be doing something. Um, finally, there's a couple missing pieces in this plan, admittedly. There's many, many, many missing pieces, and I'm sure a number of you will give me some feedback. But there's, there's three missing pieces that I wanted to call out specifically and acknowledge that are missing. Uh, one is uh, more shelter beds. As I said, we're trying to reform the way we do shelters in Los Angeles. And that's going to be a work in progress over the next couple years. But one thing that, uh, that we're working on legislatively in the city of Los Angeles is something that makes it easier for uh, private institutions, nonprofits, houses of worship, churches, and stuff like that, to create uh, mini shelters or safe havens uh, without going through uh, zoning hell and, and all sorts of uh, incredible costs. Um, we right now only declare a shelter emergency in the city of Los Angeles over a four month period every year. And we basically passed a law that doesn't allow us to declare a shelter emergency during the rest of the year. That law is in the process of being changed. And that law will then allow <clears throat> uh, for the siting of more shelter beds so that a church could open up some, some space and will also allow uh, for the development of the safe parking program uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, there's a number of, of churches and synagogues that are already interested in operating a safe parking program. And uh, they're just, there isn't a sufficient legal framework for it. So that's something that we're creating. The ordinance uh, should be in the planning committee in the next couple weeks. It has already gotten uh, enthusiastic approval from the citywide planning commission uh, about uh, two months ago. The final thing is sobering center. Uh, I think there's a um, great and tremendous need for a sobering center. I think it would be very beneficial. The city and the county are working together and the county is going to fund one in downtown Los Angeles, which is great. We certainly need one on the west side. Uh, I don't know that Venice necessarily needs to be the home of a sobering center. The west side is a very big area, uh, and it could certainly uh, be in any number of other uh, communities on the west side. But it is something that I want to acknowledge as, as sort of necessary for here on the west side, but we don't have uh, any specific location for that yet. Uh, finally, and we can discuss this at length, is uh, how can you help? You could get involved in uh, joining Venice Forward if you're interested in doing that. Um, if you are a landlord, 
we are continuing to have a problem particularly in a very hot rental market with folks making units available for folks who have uh, a housing voucher even folks who have that that piece of paper that golden lottery ticket that that, that say that says you know we'll, we'll pay the difference in your rent we still have a hard time even for veterans finding landlords who are willing so we're looking for landlords who are willing to participate and open up units uh, and finally um, there are a number of folks who have time or a small amount of money that they could use to support any of the various different organizations uh, that we indicated are part of Venice Forward, all, all the nonprofits here. Uh, or, you know, if there is someone with particularly deep pockets, and Venice now has a lot of folks with particularly deep pockets, uh, you could uh, give a large sum of money to uh, the county's flexible housing subsidy program, and you could say, I want to give half a million dollars or a million dollars and I want to, to, to essentially purchase a number of these vouchers and then you can effectively say at the end of the day I've housed 50 people uh, and I've turned their lives around uh, and that's something that I'm appealing to a number of the sort of bigger financialist interests in Los Angeles to help us do. <coughs> so uh, that's the overview. Um, now we will do questions and comments. So uh, we have passed out speaker cards. Uh, I know a lot of folks may not have filled out a speaker card because they didn't know what the hell I was going to say. Uh, now that you've heard what I have to say, uh, we'll pass out the speaker cards. Uh, we have a couple mics that can go around. We'll call the names and the, we'll go around. Um, we'll do um, uh, two minutes for each comment. And uh, Omar will be keeping the timer. And. Uh, I also want to underscore that because I know I unloaded a lot of new information tonight, this isn't the only time I'm coming out and having this discussion. Uh, I will do specific meetings on the specific proposals so folks who are near something I proposed will have an opportunity to uh, weigh in and let me know what they think.